Regular physical activity is valuable for just about everyone. And it can have very valuable health benefits ranging from weight loss to increased energy to better mood and a lower risk of chronic disease. According to the American Diabetes Association, it can be even more valuable to people with type 1 prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. And this is because regular physical activity has been proven to help increase your metabolic rate, which increases the amount of glycogen that's burned and fatty acids that are burned inside of your liver and inside of your muscle, both of which reduce insulin resistance. And that's critical to reversing type 2 diabetes and optimizing your blood glucose control in type 1 diabetes. Now in this video, we're going to cover a bunch of different questions about exercising while living with diabetes. We'll explore the benefits of exercise of different types for people living with diabetes. We'll also discuss what to keep in mind when you're exercising. And we'll also add a few fun tips and suggestions for getting started on your exercise plan. Now, in terms of getting the most bang for your buck, exercise is one of the most powerful ways to control your blood glucose in the short term. So if you're living with diabetes, this video is for you. Now let's talk about the benefits of exercise for people with type one diabetes first. The American Diabetes Association points to exercise as a crucial part of life for anyone with type one for a number of reasons. Since individuals with type 1 diabetes lack the ability to produce their own endogenous or internal insulin, staying insulin sensitive can make it much easier to control your blood glucose and also mean that you'll require less basal insulin and less bolus insulin on a daily basis. Now, exercise also helps keep your blood pressure and cholesterol within range, and that's a good thing. And that's especially helpful for people with type 1 because people with type 1 are more likely to have high cholesterol, high triglycerides, and high blood pressure over the course of time when their blood glucose becomes elevated. Now, finally, research has shown that exercise can actually reduce oxidative stress and inflammation, both of which are very effective for individuals with type 1 diabetes who have impaired insulin production. Now, the ADA and other experts also put exercise as a top recommendation for people with type 2 diabetes. Not only can it help you lower your blood glucose in the short term, its anti-obesity effects and cardiovascular benefits can be transformative. Ultimately, the underlying cause of type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance, which is caused by the accumulation of excess dietary fat in cells which are not designed to store large quantities of fat. And exercise is extremely helpful in promoting fat oxidation, which makes insulin more effective in your muscle and in your liver. And make no mistake about it, the only way to reverse type 2 diabetes is to reverse insulin resistance. Even though you may be tempted to eat a ketogenic diet, to lose weight and lower your blood glucose, you're actually going to become more insulin resistant over the course of time. Exercise reverses insulin resistance a ketogenic diet adds to insulin resistance. Now, there are three main exercise challenges for individuals with all forms of diabetes, especially when starting a new workout plan. And these challenges include fluctuations in blood glucose, joint pain, and secondary challenges like peripheral neuropathy. But keep watching because despite these challenges, exercise is always, always worth it. Now, many people with diabetes struggle with blood glucose fluctuations when they first increase their exercise volume. This can come in the form of hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, which often occurs when you burn more glucose due to increased exercise volume. It can also come in the form of hyperglycemia, which is high blood glucose, and that can usually occur immediately following a workout. Now, for this reason, it's very important to increase your exercise gradually without losing your blood glucose control, and we'll show you exactly how to make that happen. Another possible challenge is joint pain and that can increase as you increase your exercise volume. Now, diabetes can generally worsen joint pain in one of three ways, either through increased inflammation, either by damaging nerve endings, or through an increased risk of arthritis. Add to the fact that individuals with diabetes are more likely to be overweight, and that there definitely are some initial challenges to be cautious when starting to exercise as that extra weight adds more stress to your existing skeleton. But these challenges can be mitigated easily by choosing low impact exercises when you first begin your movement process. Another difficulty of fluctuating blood glucose is that some people experience retinopathy, which are visual disturbances, 
and others experience neuropathy, which is nerve tingling in your hands and in your feet. These complications are caused by the same challenges, which is that your blood glucose is elevated and it's elevated chronically. And that can hamper your ability to exercise and move your body effectively because it's hard to see sometimes and it's also hard to move your limbs the way that you want to. Now, if you're starting to exercise and notice that any of these symptoms start to hit, please reach out to your trainer or your coach immediately. Now, even though there may be some challenges here, the research is overwhelmingly in favor of performing regular exercise. In fact, experts put exercise as one of the fundamental steps in improving your diabetes health. And almost all of the risks can be handled safely by scaling up your exercise slowly and working with a trainer or an exercise coach to help develop a strategy that works for you at your current level of fitness. Now, there's two major things that people with diabetes can do to make sure that they're prepared for exercise. The first is to have a plan and make sure that you're just not overexerting yourself too quickly and that you're either hurting your joints and hurting your muscles or hurting your connective tissue and pressing beyond the limits of what your physical body can endure at this moment in time. If you do, you run the risk of muscle pain, of joint pain, and you can actually damage connective tissues like tendons and ligaments, and that can be extremely painful and very unmotivating. You can work with a trainer or coach to help you develop a personalized routine, and we strongly recommend doing this because it'll help you scale from low to medium and even high intensity exercise, okay? So over the course of time, you'll be able to increase the intensity level of your exercise regimen as you become more experienced. Another thing you can do is make sure that you have whole food available for you when you are exercising, and that will help you troubleshoot low blood glucose if it does happen to occur. Now, anytime you push yourself while exercising, it's possible that you'll experience low blood glucose, but don't worry because this can be easily combated, but just by having whole food snacks available in the vicinity. It may seem tough at first, but gradually pushing yourself will be key to increasing your insulin sensitivity and your overall wellness in the long term. Now, there's plenty of excuses that most people give for not exercising. Things like, I don't have enough time, uh, or you know what, I'm just not motivated. You know, I can't afford exercise equipment. I can't afford the cost of a gym. Or you know what, Cyrus, I just don't find it fun. I find exercise to be straight boring or repetitive. A lot of people also start suddenly kind of jump into an exercise regimen and expect that they have to be performing at a very top level. And by doing so, they end up injuring themselves in the short term. Now, fortunately, uh, it's actually smarter to take things very, very slowly when you're exercising. And that's a good thing because it'll allow you to gradually build up your strength and your endurance and the strength of your connective tissue. And all of those are required in order for your physical body to become more capable of performing more work over the course of time. Now, as you start to work with a trainer or a coach, which we highly recommend, they can help you come up with an exercise program. And that can help broaden your mind and consider some of the following ideas that can actually make exercise fun. Because trust me when I say this, if your exercise regimen is fun, you're gonna do it. If your exercise regimen is not fun, you're not gonna do it. So please focus on making sure that you are having a good time. And when you do that, you're more likely to repeat it and get the health benefits that are associated with it. Now, when it comes to low intensity exercise, low intensity slash low impact physical activity is a great place to start especially if you're just beginning an exercise program and it's been a while since you've used your body. As the research shows, this form of exercise can actually have very positive effects on nearly every aspect of diabetes. Things like Tai Chi, yoga, brisk walking, a casual swim, biking, or a hike. As long as your heart rate is slightly elevated and it's just a little bit challenging for you to have a conversation or maybe sing your favorite song, then you're technically doing an aerobic activity at low intensity and you're gonna re reap the benefits of this, including lower blood glucose, a lower A1C, and likely a lower blood pressure. Now, as you grow more comfortable, as you grow more physically fit, and as you're more capable of controlling your blood glucose during exercise, you can graduate to moderate intensity exercise. And that can be very helpful because it can help take your health to the next level. In fact, some studies have shown that moderate intensity exercise can be very beneficial for people of all levels of physical fitness, even people who are very experienced. One study showed that moderate intensity exercise interspersed with occasional high intensity exercise was an ideal balance for people living with type one diabetes. And again, there's many ways to perform medium intensity exercise that can be fun 
engaging, and interesting. Some forms of aerobic exercise, including using your body weight, using free weights, using resistance bands, these can all add to some very strategic strength training skills and they'll help you build muscle mass over the course of time. But at the same time, it's important to find a passion for one of the activities that you perform. And this can be easily done by doing things like kayaking or soccer or mountain biking or tennis or playing pickleball, which is all the rage today. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you just enjoy being in the pool and swimming. It doesn't really matter what it is. As long as you find something that you enjoy, you're likely to repeat that and get the health benefits. And finally, we have high intensity exercise. Now, high intensity exercise or vigorous exercise is without question the most challenging type of exercise. And the research actually shows that there are incredible benefits for people living with diabetes. However, it also is a little riskier than medium and low intensity exercise. And I wanna make sure that we can talk about that. Since intense cardiovascular exercise, which is technically classified as exercising at 70% or more of your aerobic capacity is quite challenging, because of this, many people with diabetes have some natural concerns about these activities, okay? This is where our first two pieces of advice come in. Number one, have a cohesive plan and do not try and scale up too quickly. And then number two, make sure that you have snacks available that are whole food carbohydrates that are very close to you, just in case your blood glucose does happen to go too low. A study that was conducted in 2005 showed that high intensity interval training, otherwise known as HIIT, H-I-I-T, is effective at lowering blood glucose and can often be less effective than moderate intensity exercise. So does that mean you shouldn't do it? No, it's effective, but sometimes moderate intensity exercise is actually better for blood glucose control. And that's a good thing because it's actually a little bit easier. The benefits of intense exercise are very powerful and they vastly outweigh the risks if you're comfortable performing it. Okay, and I also want you to understand that you shouldn't always train in one of these modes and one of these modes only. Okay, it's smart to vary your exercise between low intensity, medium intensity, and high intensity. And again, we recommend working with a trainer or an exercise coach who can teach you how to add in all three different intensity levels and in, into your training plan. So what's the final word here? Well, even though exercise can be a little bit intimidating at the beginning, especially if you're having trouble with your blood glucose control, it can be incredibly beneficial in the long term. After all, it's a fun way to have fun, and it's one of the key steps in reversing insulin resistance, which we talk about a lot on this channel. We recommend working with a trainer or an exercise coach. Just go to your local gym or pick up the phone and talk to a friend who knows a lot about exercise and talk to them before starting your regimen. Because again, when you start your workload and you start it too quickly, you can actually experience a lot of soreness and a lot of pain, and we don't want you to experience that. And the third thing that's very important is to do exercise that you love. I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again. The only exercise regimen that you will do is the one that you really enjoy doing. Because if you don't enjoy doing it, it's gonna feel like a chore, it's gonna feel like a, a habit that somebody else is telling you to do and not something that you're internally motivated to wanna do yourself. We have personally seen people adopt physical exercise regimens, myself included, who have dropped their A1C drastically. And they've gotten their A1C to non-diabetic levels. They've had diabetes removed from their medical diagnosis. They've lost a significant amount of weight and been able to keep that weight off. They've increased their energy levels dramatically and they feel like a million bucks. But the most important thing that you can do is not only start an exercise regimen, but also do it in the context of eating a low fat plant-based whole food diet. Together, the combination of those two are two out of three components of the Mastering Diabetes Method. And if that's something that you might be interested in, then that's a good thing. Because many people have been telling us about their A1C miracle. As soon as they applied the Mastering Diabetes Method to their life, their A1C came down, it stayed down, and diabetes was reversed off of their medical record. We have a wide range of, of group coaching programs and private coaching programs that are specifically designed to help you at any step of the process. If you're interested in that, simply click on the link below and you can book a free discovery call with a member of the Mastering Diabetes team. And there you'll be able to learn about which coaching program may be best for you. And finally, don't forget to push that cute little like button on your screen and you can do it with your thumb or you can do it with your mouse. You can subscribe to our channel and please turn on notifications so that you'll be notified of future videos as soon as they come out. Thanks for your time and I will see you in the next video.